Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much, Steph. So well done for the ones who are here and uh, braved the weather today. So I will start with a trip announcement for the PJ. The President of the General Assembly, His Excellency Mr. Dennis Francis, will pay an official visit to Kampala, Uganda, from the 17th to the 21st of January to attend the 19th Summit of the Non-Aligned Movement held under the theme Deepening Cooperation for Shared Global Affluence, and the third summit, or the third South Summit, I should say, of the Group of 77 in China on 21st of January, which is convened under the theme Leaving No One Behind. The PJ will highlight that at a time of unprecedented crisis, the combined voice of the Global South is needed much more. While in Kampala, the PJ will pay a courtesy call on His Excellency Mr. Yoweri Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda, as host and incoming chair of both groups. Among others, the PJ will also hold bilateral meetings with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the UN country team, and also the resident coordinator in Uganda. President Francis looks forward to using this opportunity to address a range of pressing global issues, including calling for meaningful action on climate change, sustainable development, global peace and security, and human rights. The PJ's visit to the Republic of Uganda is therefore part of a broader effort to underscore the UN's commitment to promoting inclusive dialogue among its North and South membership in confronting global challenges, ensuring a more prosperous and harmonious world. President Francis will be accompanied by his chef de cabinet, his special advisor on gender equality on women's empowerment, a human rights and humanitarian affairs senior advisor, as well as a communication advisor. From Uganda, the PJ and his delegation will proceed with back-to-back -back official visits to India and China. We will bring you more details on the visits to Asia in due course, travel costs for the Summit of the Non-Aligned Movement and the Third South Summit of the Group of 77 in China are covered by the government of the Republic of Uganda and the OPGA Trust Fund. Now, this morning, President Francis presided over an informal meeting of the General Assembly where he delivered a briefing on his priorities for the resumed part of the current session. In his remarks, the PJ took the opportunity to both reflect on the progress to date and the associated challenges with a view to casting our renewed vision towards a future world that is more peaceful, prosperous, progressive, and with sustainable development for all. President Francis said that member states must not ignore and overlook the challenges and setbacks, including the dire consequences of escalating violence in the Gaza Strip and other affected areas, continued aggression against Ukraine and violent outbreaks in Sudan, the internal strife in Haiti, and several other situations of concern elsewhere that affected international peace and security. In his remarks, President Francis also invited member states to work together on the summit of the future, which will take place later this year, where world leaders are expected to gather here in New York to forge a new global consensus on how to better deliver for people and planet. The PJ firmly believes that this high-level event can and must be a unique opportunity to supercharge SDG implementation. For the entire speech, you can access the PJ's website on www.un.org slash PJ slash 78. And if you are on our mailing list, you must have received it this morning after he spoke. And this afternoon, the General Assembly will hold a meeting to take action on the draft decision to hold a high-level plenary meeting on addressing the existential threats posed by sea level rise. Member states will decide whether to hold the meeting on 25th of September about this topic. And the meeting will be on UNTV, uh, UN of course, and UN webcast for you starting today at 3 p.m. Um, okay, just for your... Um, information or household. Uh, 
there will be two changes uh, in our agenda for this week. The informal meeting of the general committee, which was going to take place today, has been scheduled to the 5th of February. And the joint briefing by the presidents of the GA and ECOSOC, which was scheduled for tomorrow morning, will now take place on the 2nd of February. And before we leave, I would like to introduce you, uh, or to you, a new colleague on, uh, in our team, Serena Gigliu. Gigliu. She's uh, in the back, and she uh, will be working with you, you all. So welcome, Serena, once again. And this is everything we have for today. Do you have anything else? How are you, Gabriel? How are you doing? Good, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question. Um, sure, go ahead. In 2021, mm -hmm. um, an independent international commission of inquiry uh, on the occupied Palestinian territories was set up under the auspices of the UN Human Rights Council with no time frame on, on looking into hum, p potential human rights abuses. Uh, the Israeli foreign ministry has confirmed that they are not allowing members of this commission to interview and or talk to any medical personnel that were involved with treating anyone after the October 7th attack. This report will be presented to the General Assembly later this year, is my understanding. Mm -hmm. So how does the, the president feel about this report being presented in a few months later this year, knowing that the commission is not getting access to all of the information and or people that they wanna talk to regarding their, uh, what they're looking into. Thank you, Gabriel, for your question. First of all, um, the, the president is fully supportive of the work of uh, uh, committees and uh, the work commissioned uh, on behalf of the United uh, Nations. And uh, in this particular case, we have here two situations. It's not the first time, and I'm not uh, uh, going ahead of uh, what has been decided or what uh, is uh, in the news that we all uh, saw uh, 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 today. Uh, member states are expected to cooperate, right? They are expected uh, to uh, work together with the United Nations and with uh, uh, independent in, in, in many cases, specialists in, in several topics. Uh, about the decision of a particular member states, I would refer you to the mission in question that will uh, explain to you uh, their, their reasons. Uh, the appeal of the PGA is always about cooperation, about uh, dialogue, and about member states uh, fulfilling their responsibilities. Um, you are aware that it, it's not uh, uh, this is not uh, uh, news uh, in, in many cases uh, where there are challenges uh, for specialists to reach uh, certain areas where they uh, need information from. And uh, the PJ uh, again, reiterates the appeal that uh, uh, access is, uh, is uh, facilitated. Uh, but when this is not the case, um, uh, there have been uh, uh, cases before, in examples before, where reports are produced uh, with other, um, 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 how can I say, uh, uh, means and, and ways, yeah, that the specialists decided to, to, to use. But again, uh, you are uh, recommended to speak to the mission in question to ask for, for the reasons. Uh, the appeal of the PJ is to cooperate and uh, with our specialists uh, commissioned by the United Nations uh, to produce the report that is necessary and has been uh, uh, requested. Uh, anything else? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Oh, mm -hmm. Iranian uh, last missile attack killed four civilians in Kurdistan region of Iraq last is your, night. So is, sorry, is your microphone on? Because I can't... Uh, yeah, Iranian last okay. attack killed four civilians last night in Kurdistan region of Iraq, and one of them were a kid, not even a one-year-old baby, plus injured 17 people. I wonder, like, what's, what's your reaction on that? And I wonder if the president is condemns this attack. The PJ took note, of course, of uh, the attack, and uh, his appeal is for um, um, tensions uh, to come down. Uh, we are uh, in a 
moment right now where further tension uh, is not going to be um, good for anyone. And uh, it's not going to uh, help to achieve what we need to achieve uh, in the region. Um, of course, you mentioned the victims uh, of this attack, and uh, the PJ sends his condolences to all affected and ask for calm and restraint. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Dulce. How are you today? Uh, I'm okay. Um, mm. Since uh, Gender Equality Advisor is going with the PGA to Uganda, what, what specifically w are they planning to uh, talk about, given that Uganda has one of the highest teenage motherhood rates and in the world? Sure. Um, the PGA will be uh, having the opportunity to... Um, uh, visit um, UNFPA uh, program there called Catalytic Seed Fund for Adolescent uh, Girls and Young Women, uh, which is dedicated, by the way, this program to the prevention of gender bias, gender based violence, and the empowerment of women. This is one of the uh, most important uh, um, topics for the PGA, a priority for him. Uh, and he will be uh, not only meeting uh, uh, stakeholders there and uh, the people uh, affected, but also having discussions uh, with um, all concerned. Thank you. Anything but, else? But what are the goals of these discussions? Well, we will see. Well, you all will be uh, uh, given uh, readouts from, this, from these meetings. Uh, the PJ will interact uh, with uh, these groups there. And of course, uh, um, um, Enforce or, or reinforce and strengthen uh, the his uh, priority of having uh, uh, women's empowerment and of course the the rights of women and girls respected and uh, of course uh, put into practice everywhere not only in Uganda. So if you don't have anything else, I would say thank you so much and I will see you next week because this is our last briefing for today. Thanks. <laughs>